almost summer, the time for school to be out and to have fun, exploring and learning new things, travel, and not be in school. Summers can be some of the best times of the year when you can get time off. And since it is summer for me and many other people, I thought it would be fun to share some of my adventures from over the years. Now I know what you're thinking. Suka, I thought you said you were sick all the time when you were growing up. Or, you going on holiday, Suka, but you're an introvert. You don't like being around nature or other people. And to a certain extent, that's true. I don't like big, suffocating, panic-inducing crowds usually. But there are some places where I will tolerate it at, like conventions or theme parks, museums, national parks, and so on. <clears throat> In these instances, my love for the activity outweighs my dislike for being around people. I love having fun. I love being a geek and nerding out over things. I love learning about historical things, and I enjoy being out in nature, mainly because when you find these rare hidden place, places, little gems in the world where you can really be alone and recharge your batteries for a time, that's one of my favorite things to do early in the summer. That's right, your girl here actually enjoys camping and traveling every now and again which leads us into today's story time because boy have I got a few fun stories to tell now I'm not going to talk about my trips to theme parks like Disneyland and Disney World nah that will be in my next video today's story time will be revisiting my trips to a few national parks no rides, no characters, unless you count Smokey the Bear. Good old Smokey. Plenty of trails, hiking, beautiful scenery, places to be alone from the world. It works, too. Now, the earliest memory I have was when the family took a trip to Yosemite National Park. I had to ask mom for a few details because I wasn't even a year old at the time. My dad had me on a belly pack thing and I just remember seeing lots of green foliage all around. Then I heard the roar of Yosemite Falls as we approached and I remember looking around being amazed that something that big and loud existed. And that's it. That's my earliest memory that I have, which I think cemented my love of nature. My dad never believed that I could remember something that early on in life until I saw a picture on a National Geographic magazine volume featuring Yosemite Falls and I just kept commenting how familiar it was to me because I would have dreams about it still. My next vacation that I recall rather more clearly was when we visited the volcano Mount St. Helens. It was 1990, 10 years after the big eruption. It was eerie, looked like a moonscape, ash, dirt, and destruction everywhere you looked. Everything was still gray and black, with barely anything green poking through. I was maybe five or six years old and once again amazed, but this time I was amazed at the seemingly permanent devastation of Mother Nature. There were no trees, just bare matchsticks poking out from the ash, all blasted to death and over in single directions because of the force of the eruption and landslide which followed on May 18, 1980. Once again, I fell in love with Mother Nature, but now there was awe and respect. On that same trip, it decided to rain, and we didn't have any camper trailers or motorhomes to be in away from it. Oh no. My family wasn't super wealthy or anything. We had tents, and unless you came prepared with tarps, ropes, clamps, etc., or have a really good 
waterproofed tent, y'all are going to get soaked when it rains. you think my dad, being a flower child hippie, he might have thought, hmm, we're going to be near the Washington coastline where it's known to be super rainy. Maybe we should pack more tarps and such in case it rains on us. But nope, not this trip. Not even my mom thought to bring any extra anti-rain force fields. And can you guess what might have happened? That's right. On the second or third day, we got rained on. And it wasn't some sprinkle or gentle rain. No. We got dumped on. It's like Mother Nature saw a happy family with a golden retriever enjoying themselves, learning about volcanoes and geology, then decided to amp things up and dump buckets and buckets and buckets of water on them. Needless to say, after the second day of rain, our tent was leaking. So, we had to hurry over to the small town nearby where it turns out it had been storming so much the power went out. Luckily this was before the days of fully automated, fully electrical cash registers, but still. I just remember feeling so bad for the two clerks in this shop. <laughs> I also remember the snails on that trip and mom having to keep them out of the tent. Not to mention our golden retriever getting so soaked he smelled like a wet dog the rest of the trip even though we worked to keep him dry so he wouldn't get sick. Nothing makes hot cocoa taste better than a chilly rainy day and a malfunctioning tent. Am I right? <laughs> I was so happy that my comic books and cassette tape player didn't get wet. That was one thing we were smart about, at least. Also on that trip, it got so foggy. You know that old phrase, the fog is so thick it's like pea soup? Yeah. I learned the definition of that phrase on that trip. We couldn't see the volcano, you know, the thing we were there to see. And we even went up an old road that had a blasted down tree in it, so we had to turn around because this was the days before GPS and had no idea it was there. Can you see why I remember this trip so vividly? It was the trip where everything that could go wrong did go wrong, except for keeping our books and cassettes safe. Priorities, right? But I didn't let this trip turn me off camping. In fact, I still loved it because we spent extra time in the museums learning all we could as a result. And our dog, being a golden retriever, wasn't miserable either. He had a grand old time with the rain. I mean, goldens are water dogs after all. We had to keep him out of it for long stretches of time because we didn't want him getting ill. Our next trip to St. Helens two years later was once again rainy as heck, but we were better prepared because whenever we went camping in the woods over the following two years, nature decided to try and crap all over our holiday making and rain all over us. So my parents decided to save up for a small camper trailer. And that took a couple of years because, as I mentioned before, we weren't exactly the wealthiest of people. <clears throat> and so, for the next trip to St. Helens, we had our camper trailer. It had a small fridge, stove, oven, even a sink to wash dishes or get drinking water from. Plus screens in the windows and doors to keep bugs out on days we weren't hiking or driving around, but wanted fresh air. It even had a toilet and a mini shower. It wasn't one of those fancy mother homes with full-sized everything, TVs, etc. It was cramped with a table that converted to be my bed at night and only had a couple electrical outlets. But it was still a million times better than that old malfunctioning tent 
we had on our last trip. It still rained buckets, but we were dry. The camper trailer had a body mirror on the door to the bathroom too, and it was so funny when our golden retriever finally saw his reflection on it one day during the trip. You know those videos here on YouTube when the golden see their reflections but don't realize it's them so they start wigging out and barking at it. Yeah, that's exactly what happened and it was hilarious especially on the rainy day when you're not able to do a whole lot. That kind of cheap entertainment was just perfect for us to laugh at. We got to actually see the volcano once at the start and again at the end of the vacations. So that was nice. There was this movie documentary at one of the big museums there. And when the film was over, the screens were raised up to reveal a view of the volcano itself just as the clouds were fading away. The sun was shining and there were very audible gasps of awe at the sight from the group around us. It was a beautiful way to end our second trip to Mount St. Helens. I went straight up to the window, nose pressed against the glass. Windy Pass wasn't open at the time, so this was as close as we could get. Windy Pass is a mile away from the crater where you can look down into it. I told y'all I was geeky nerd about things, <laughs> right? <laughs> now this last story for today takes place the year before we got our little camper trailer. We had budgeted things out so we could still do a couple of trips in the meantime. One of these trips was a family holiday to Disneyland which I'll get into in the next video. The other trip to Glacier National Park is what I'll be chatting about here today. Now Glacier National Park, for those who may not know, is in Montana right by the Canadian border. And my Canadian friends will know how cold it gets there. My family and I, plus our Golden Retriever, went there one year in June. As I mentioned before, we didn't quite have our camper trailer yet, so we slept in the truck or in not so expensive cabins that allowed pets. For this trip, we were a little more prepared than the two to St. Helens. It being early June in Glacier National Park, it was actually still cold. So cold, in fact, that it snowed on numerous occasions, hence sleeping in cabins. On our last day, we were getting everything packed into the truck. It wasn't until we were a state away that I realized I left something behind. All through my trips with the family, there was always a large stuffed bubblegum pink bunny that was as big as I was back then, which I took with me everywhere. It was my comfort buddy at night, especially when there would be wolves, bears, or coyotes and mountain lions howling and prowling around at night. I wasn't afraid that my pink stuffed bunny was more fierce than any of those potentially man-killing creatures out there. My pink bunny would wreck your face. <clears throat> so yeah, I realized halfway home that I left my pink bunny in the cabin at Glacier Park. I was a kid, okay? That was a devastating, heartbreaking loss to experience at night. To experience at night the rest of the way home, I had to rely on my dog for protection. Thank goodness he slept at the back of the seat of the truck with me. I was having a hard time being apart from my nightmare slayer bunny as it was. Fortunately, my mom called the cabins when we got home and a week and a half later I was reunited with my pink stuffed bunny. And yes, I still have that silly pink bunny to this day. I only lost it once, okay? Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed today's story time as I rambled on about camping stories from my more youthful days. I hope you have a great day, evening, night, whatever time of day it is, 
where you have where you're at. And if you have a chance to enjoy your summer, get out there and have some fun. Who knows? It may even make for a funny video idea someday. <clears throat> Thank you so much for watching and listening to my ramblings. Don't forget to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button for more. It all means a lot to me and I really do appreciate when people comment on the videos. And it does help this channel grow. Alrighty, enjoy the last little bit of this video everyone. Happy arting! Bye!